<laughs> All right, let's get into it. What a weekday. I'm here with Kendra, Hallie, Sarah, Pundit, David on the ones and twos. <laughs> Biden delivered this one liner at last week's North American Building Trades Union Conference. By the way, remember when he was trying to deal with COVID? He said, just inject a little bleach in your veins. <laughs> he missed it, all went to his hair. That joke killed that. I don't think you ever <laughs> crushed that hard. Yeah. Biden then transitioned into his crowd work segment by asking people in the audience if they're, quote, fucking or sucking or what. <laughs> I want to talk to his skin person. I want to know what he's on. Skin looks good. It's, it's skin looks great. Yeah. You, looks great. You got to see him in person, right? He looked great. I did. I did. He looks great. Well, I need he looks the information. Great. He looks great. That's the info. Yeah. Uh, there were canapes. How was the White House food? I didn't eat anything. Okay. I don't, you know. <laughs> You don't. Yeah. During a campaign speech in Tampa last Tuesday, Biden mocked Trump's Bible salesman side gig. He said there has to be punishment for women exercising the reproductive freedom. He described the Dobbs decision as a miracle. Maybe it's coming from that Bible he's trying to sell. Whoa. I almost wanted to buy one just to see what the hell's in it. <laughs> I mean, it is possible that if you're looking for retrograde ideas about how to treat women, there are worse books to check, you know, when you think about it. Wait, there are worse? Than what's in the Bible? No, there are worse books to check that aren't the Bible. Like the Bible will have those ideas. Yeah. 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 That was clear from the grammar of it. No. Yeah. All right. It wasn't like laugh out loud clear. I was, was it? <laughs> definitely I wasn't laugh out loud a clear. Just yeah. sort of a true observation. Yeah, just an observation. A Biden campaign spokesman said that the president is coming up with his own taunts himself, saying, this isn't SNL. We're not writing jokes for him. This isn't SNL, a creaking institution that kind of works, but also is somehow immune to time and all competitors. I hope it is SNL. <laughs> Biden is SNL. I hope he's as immortal as Lauren Michaels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, I think they got the same skin guy. Go to the same sand blaster. <laughs> <laughs> they both seem like they would have the popcorn machine, which is famously, apparently, Laura Michaels has the popcorn machine in his, in his apartment. What's the popcorn machine? In his, uh, in his office. Oh, just like a popcorn, like a... Uh, like an actual popcorn machine. They make it before he arrives, so you know when he's about to arrive, because you smell the popcorn emanating through the office. Which I like, thought you meant do... some kind of like... Some good Lauren lore. Yeah. I thought you meant that it was like some kind of... I thought it was like a euphemism for some kind like of skin that treatment. That I wish it was... against your skin and, and clears the pores. I do feel like that's... That could be part of it. I love popcorn. Imagine getting called into Lauren's office and he's telling you you're fired and it just smells like popcorn. It just ruins that experience whenever you go to the movies. Yeah. I've had weirder experiences at work. Well, sure. Yeah, you work here. I mean, <laughs> there's not any popcorn. We're, if there were, fr if there was fresh pop popcorn here every day, totally different experience. You guys go to Dynasty every week, Hallie. Oh yeah, that's right. right. The taunting continued at Saturday's White House Correspondents' Dinner. But look, <laughs> age. Is the only thing we have in common. My vice president actually endorses me. You bet, said Kamala Harris, glancing up from her jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> Trump fired back in a Truth Social post, writing that the White House Correspondents' Dinner was really bad, Colin Joe's bombed, and Crooked Joe was an absolute disaster doesn't get much worse than this. I don't know, I actually tuned into the Truth Social Correspondents' Dinner for a bit, and I would say it wasn't much funnier. No, 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 no. No, come on, guys. That wasn't it. Can we get the uh, the actual clip from the True Social Correspondence Dinner? I am your redeemer. It is by my hand you will rise from the ashes of this world. Nice. That was sort of the serious close. Biden also gave an interview to Howard Stern on Friday where he was asked if he'd be willing to debate Trump before the election. Biden replied, I am somewhere. I don't know when, but I am happy to debate him. Howard Stern capped off the interview by asking the president if his tits were real and if he'd ever be open to sleeping with an older man. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny to be on the East Coast when that dropped because I had kind of forgotten the scramble that happens when you wake up and something unexpected shows up. Because when we wake up here, everyone's kind of taking care of yeah, it already. Yeah, we're three hours yeah. behind. <laughs> but people were like, seemed to just be like freaking out. <laughs> it's nice being on the West Coast. You can miss a whole news cycle. Yeah. Trump advisor Chris Lasavita responded in a quote tweet writing, okay, let's set it up. For those listening who aren't from Los Angeles, let's set it up is code for it's never going to happen. <laughs> 
Oh, and we all know what that sound means. A Republican politician murdered a dog. <laughs> An excerpt from South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem's forthcoming memoir went viral this week in which she describes killing her dog Cricket, a wire-haired pointer, in a gravel pit near her home. You can't treat a dog like this. You can't treat a dog like their life is nothing to you. This isn't a woman with preeclampsia. <laughs> oh. According to Gnome, the 14 <laughs> sorry. <laughs> According to Gnome, the 14-month-old puppy, puppy, went out of her mind with excitement during a pheasant hunt and attacked a neighbor's chickens before biting Gnome when she tried to pull her away. You know what they say, you can't teach a young dog new tricks after Christy Gnome executes them gangland style. <laughs> Besides, that puppy should have known that we have an elaborate system of rules for different kinds of birds, like <laughs> pheasants and chickens. You can't not kill a pheasant and then kill a chicken and expect to live. Wrote Gnome, I hated that dog, calling Cricket untamable and dangerous to anyone she came in contact with and less than worthless as a hunting dog. I can't help but think that a skilled ghostwriter would know that I can make tough decisions as an angle works better when you admit the part about how much you hate the dog. It's like if in the Sully Sullenberger biography, he said crashing the plane into the river was the only way he could come. <laughs> It would take away from the heroism. Yeah, I'm obsessed with him. You'd have to, you'd have to wonder if he always wanted to it's, crash and land in the river. In the back of your mind, you'd be you thinking, wouldn't be sure. It's like, oh, one goose got in there. You gotta land that thing. <laughs> All right, brother. Noam concluded her anecdote by pointing to it as proof that she is willing to do the things that are difficult, messy, and ugly. But you don't need to tell us you killed a dog to show us that you're willing to do things that are difficult, messy, and ugly. We got that from the fact that you want to be Trump's VP. <laughs> Yeah, it was worth it. Worth we it. spent so much time. <laughs> Delon, we, I just want everyone listening at home to know that to produce that sound effect, <laughs> Hallie, Sarah, and I, and Delon, Delon is playing horn after horn and mm -hmm. bark, bark after, after bark. bark. And we're like, no, no, Hallie, Hallie make the sound. <laughs> how do you Google how do you, that? How do you Google it? How do you Google I, that? I Googled old time again. Delon Googled clown car. And, and that's how that we was find it. it. Clown and, car. Then, and then it was time to also affix a bark to it. What kind of bark? Delon had selected a howl. Mm -hmm. Didn't work. Couldn't it fly. did. It was all kind of ominous. And we're like, no, we need a, we need a, we need a higher bark. And finally, we realized it had to be a specific breed. It had to be a Jack Russell Terrier. Wouldn't be funny if it wasn't a Jack Russell Terrier. And listeners, I want to know from each and every one of you in the comments, was that worth it? They're going to say yes. Well, I guess the, the people who have com been commenting are people who enjoy to see how the sausage is made. And only a pervert would want to see how the sausage is made. <laughs> it's just all the meat getting all mixed up. You know what I mean? Like It's like, okay, I don't need to see all that. Gnome also said she shot and killed a nasty and mean male goat that liked to chase her children, saying it took two bullets to put him down. I don't mind the dog thing, but goats too. She's lost my support, said an extra dark chocolate bar. <laughs> um, said I, a grape. I just feel like she can't keep accusing the animals of being bad. Like, <laughs> at a certain point, it's like, well, you're either the dumbest person in the world or you actually think this. It's like, they're just animals. There's no maliciousness happening. They're not thinking about just it in that way. Their kids out of the goat pen. I don't know. Also, who hates a dog? Okay, so here... Uh, no, I love my Kendra. dog. No, no, that's yeah. not. You say you love yeah. animals. No, I actually like what I think that this is worth saying. I have a lot of friends from non-white cultures who do not like dogs. They don't want to be around them. They don't want mm -hmm. them in their offices. They don't want them in their homes. Like that's not. Seems like a blanket statement, but I'll, I'll, no, I'll I, I, I have quite a few friends who like who feel that way. Um, and this is like something that is just such an. Um, it is very American. It is. It's. It's very us. I'm not saying what she did was right by any means. Like that is not well, I how think I we're would okay ever. Saying we're, we're, we're I mean, wrong. you cannot like dogs, but then you yeah. just don't get a dog and execute it. I, I also think when people say I I, right, say. That, yeah. I think, and that's such an important point. But yeah. I, I also think that like when people say I don't like dogs, mm -hmm. they're not saying that's a that's a shorthand for I don't like being a being around dogs. To have an animosity. For the animal itself, the specific animal. It's yes. more it's really that like I don't, don't want to have a dog. I, dogs scare me. I don't feel safe around dogs. Dogs are dirty. I don't like being around them. You can have all those feelings. You can hate the experience of being around a dog without being like, I hate that dog. Also, like, you can't name a dog Cricket if you're going to murder it. It's too cute a name. <laughs> right. It just I don't know. It's just very interesting. I mean, there's there is a a moment in the show Fallout on Amazon where a character watch, stream it now. St sure. Spo no spoilers. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna 
Mm. You cover your ears. Cause spoiler alert, everyone well, watching okay, and listening but, to this. Yes. Wait, but if you're listening and you don't want to spoil it for Fallout, I'm covering my ears. Okay, there's just a very interesting moment where Walton Goggins' character, who is a character that is a scene chewer, he's, everyone is really enjoying him. He kills a dog. That happens. Mm-hmm. And then by the end of the episode, they have him specifically, they take a moment to have him bring the dog back to life. And it was just very interesting for me to see them do that. And I'm sure it's a plot point or something, but it felt to me in the moment like they felt like they had to do that in order so that people could continue to enjoy the scene chewing, otherwise very fun character that he was playing. And that just like struck me as all of this Christy Gnome stuff was coming out in the same weekend that I was watching this. Oh, so come back. Just do that. Come, yeah. I'm back. I have a trick for when I want to avoid spoilers. You don't just cover your ears. You cover your ears and you drum the back of your head just yep. a little bit mm. and you're alone. That sounds nice. Try it. Try if it. If you grit your teeth and you have a touch of titanus, you can also you can make really, your ears ring. You can really put on, you can put on noise canceling headphones That's cool. with your hands if you want. Yeah. Just, just drum the back. Uh, That's I, a little tip from me. I do think that there is a, it, there's a level of depravity to this that I think... What is shocking is that she's admitting it and seeing it specifically like that would be in the show, the thing you don't need to know about. Yeah. But like it, it, it is something that this would indicate in a TV show or a movie that this person's evil. Yes. Like this yeah. is an unequivocal, this is a horrible thing to do. This person's horrible. And then to see this is a governor who's then going to try to explain it. And I will say from my perspective, as someone who's from a semi-rural area where people had a lot of animals and animals were dying left, right, center. It's just part of living out with that bunch of animals. This is bizarre. Like this is I, I this is something that is someone who cared about animals would not be doing this nor talking about it in the way that she is which is that she specifically hates these individual animals that's insane that's like an insane way to think about this and again she is the governor and that's and that's again like do it don't tell don't tell any of us yeah, about announcing it. announcing it is the insane part. Like no yes. one no well, one's also don't do around it. this. Don't yes. do it, but also, also we wouldn't have it. known. We wouldn't be having this yeah, conversation if you questions. didn't tell us. We she don't thought, need it. She thought that this was a story. This she she just missorted this story um for the same reason I think she murdered the puppy, which is she she didn't understand um how uh how it how what what it revealed about her. By the way, she also had to go back to her truck. Uh, to reload to kill the goat because <laughs> yeah, she, the first yes, shot Christ. didn't kill the goat, which just means that the goat went out bad. Yes, right. That's on her, and that's on her. Like it's a goat. You should be if you can't kill a yeah, goat with one shot. That's on you. Yeah, Kevin Costner did that horse immediately in the first episode of uh, of Yellowstone, and we all remember that. Listen, I was trying to watch what the people were watching. I wanted to understand. No, I get that. In a statement calling itself the Dogmocratic Party. <sighs> Woof. The DNC declared, <laughs> if you want elected officials who don't brag about brutally killing their pets as part of their self-promotional book tour, then listen to our owners and vote Democrat. Democrats couldn't be further from Republicans on this issue. They wouldn't put down a dog even after it mauled 600 Secret Service agents. <laughs> Noam defended herself in a social media post saying, even if it was hard and painful, I followed the law and was being a responsible parent, dog owner, and neighbor. As I explained in the book, it wasn't easy, but often the easy way isn't the right way. First of all, I, I think the word, the phrase follow the law is very interesting there because the law may have allowed her to mm. murder a puppy, but it didn't require her to murder a puppy. This is a situation in which she isn't saying the law bound her conduct, but permitted it. That's not a defense. That's a, you know, there's all kinds of things the law allows. Like it was interesting because I saw it and I was like, oh, I never haven't thought about that. But when people say they follow the law, it can either mean that they did something the law required them to do, or they did something the law allowed them to do, or they did something in a way they wouldn't have otherwise done it in order to comply with the law. In this case, she just means the law allowed her to do it. Yes, they did something that technically is not a criminal action. Well, I think, unfortunately, like you said earlier, like, oh, she misunderstood how this comes across. And what I would argue is, that's her understanding of how this comes across. It's like, I have done something that I am allowed to do by the law, and if the law allows it, then it is permissible with no interest in what other people would find think about it emotionally morally just as animal lovers like it is exactly that like she wants you to know i am willing to do these things provided i am uh, legally allowed to like it's going up to the law but unfortunately we live in america so the law can be changed and has been changed and like they're attempting to change the law specifically for that reason like oh i'm allowed to do, to do these horrible things the law the law says i i can Once the law allows me to enter a home 
without cause, rip a family apart and forcibly deport them, I am willing to do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's sort of their worldview about it. It's like when someone says something terrible and people get mad at them and they're like, it's a free country. We got free speech. It's like, yeah, you're allowed to say whatever you want, but people will get mad at you. Like we could see you and hear you and we're also people. Like that's what you don't seem to understand. I do, there's just an ideological part of this where um, it's a kind of cruel politics and she, that like, it's interesting because I, I like I was surprised she is in her statements. Clearly, this is like she is defensive now. Like she's not she's not doing the kind of Marjorie Taylor Greene style, like come at me, mm-hmm. libs. Yeah, she feels like this is a real issue. She's responding as though she has a genuine problem. She sorted this into the like, I know Republicans and these days Republicans want justice without mercy. And that if I can call this justice, I don't need to worry about mercy because we don't care about mercy anymore. And actually, we view mercy as a form mm-hmm. of weakness and a way of being taken advantage of. And everything about Trump, everything about Republican politics is to say Democrats are merciful because they are weak and pathetic right. and dupes. Every time you're compassionate, someone's going to take advantage of you. Don't be compassionate. Don't be merciful. All you need is justice. And this was, I think, a reminder that while there might be some subset of the Republican base that has gone so far that they get to the point where like, yeah, sometimes you got to kill a 14 month old puppy because it's easier to do that than to find a better home and stop asking me to do don't I, it's woke to demand you save a dog's life or whatever they'd have to get to. Like, they're not that far yet. And but I do think the like to Kendra's point, like there is a kind of like uh Hundred percent justice, zero percent mercy. Yeah. Po- political agenda, and uh, she just misfired because people love dogs more. It's than a puppy. Is. That's the thing. Yeah. It's like yeah. the one thing. If it, it, like there's so many other things she could have scenarios she described, and it's like you described the one scenario where even the most brutal person's like, well, you didn't have to like shoot the puppy. And I and I think that's the thing that that says more to me about her than the actual murder of the puppy which again is bad we all agree we all agree it is the full miscalculation that she is not smart enough to realize how that would come off and thought to herself this is a good story to release yeah and that this would come off well and i think that that not a great sign that should tell us more yeah or just as much as the shooting of the dog yeah yeah can't argue with that no I think the shooting of the dog is still worse than even telling us about it. I, number one, number two. I think they're right yeah. there. You know? the heart. The number pr- three was that ad for veneers she put on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first, the dog murder. Two, the book. Three, the veneers. Uh, anyway, as she, you know, she claims sometimes the right thing isn't easy, but the hard way isn't always right either. Uh, I would find it hard to hunt the love it or leave it crew in the woods with a crossbow, but that wouldn't make me a hero for doing it, even if they do maul a few chickens when I let them leave the office. Also, you'd find it hard simply because I don't believe that you can use a crossbow. Also, we're too fast. No, you're, you're sh- not you would just fast. wear the wrong shoes. <laughs> you're not too fast. I think you'd just wear the wrong shoes and then we'd barely outrun you. Yeah. The three of us versus love it in the woods, the three of us are taking it. We just, we're taking it. We taking just run up to run in three different directions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Depends how much time I have. You have to start practicing crossbow now. Wrote Gnome in another tweet, we love animals, but tough decisions like this happen all the time on a farm. Sadly, we just had to put down three horses a few weeks ago that had been in our family for 25 years. But what was she supposed to do? The horses tried to unionize. In the end, in the end, Gnome had dug herself quite a hole to bury her pets, but also a (laughs) metaphorical hole because of the scandal around killing her pets. (laughs) The New York Post reported Monday that an anonymous Trump ally claimed Nome now has no chance of being Trump's VP following the story. Said the Post source, Trump isn't a dog person necessarily. No fucking shit. <laughs> I love that me? qualifier. That yeah, was so yeah, good. He's not. But I think he understands that you can't choose a puppy killer as your pick for blatantly obvious reasons. This is not important. I hate the phrase bl- blatantly obvious. Mm-hmm. It just means obviously obvious. And I don't know... Maybe this is wrong. Maybe there is an answer. But is there something that can be obvious without being obviously obvious? Hmm. Is there something that can be subtly or unex- subtly obvious? Because isn't it obvious? No, if it's obvious, then yeah. it's... So, like, obviously obvious is like the, the derivative of obvious. Like, obvious, obvious is the curve. And obviously obvious is like the 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 slope of the curve. And it's like... We get if I don't I just don't I just think it's doing too much. Are you suggesting that Trump allies aren't smart and good at language? 
Is well, that what you're trying to? But I, sure. But that's yes, also like that a, is just something a common I'm, I would allege. Blatantly, I know, but I don't. I just don't know why. You, if he said uh, you can't choose a puppy killer, and I think the reason is obvious, that's better than saying blatantly obvious. I don't think well, it makes it seem more. Blatantly almost feels like he's acknowledging that some people won't think it's obvious. Like blatantly almost undermines the obviousness of it, which makes sense because she doesn't know it's obvious. That's what we're writing him to is like, it is obvious and yet she published, she's publishing it in a memoir. If obvi- if blatantly obvious means anything, it wouldn't apply here because this is a situation yeah. in which they're saying to us, this is obvious to her. It was not, it wasn't blatantly obvious. It was just obvious. And see, this and dis- actually that argues for the fact that there is a place for a phrase like blatantly obvious in a situation where you don't have a disagreement as to whether or not it was obvious. You turned yourself right around. Yeah. This wow. dislike, you this dislike of the adverbs. <laughs> is, <laughs> this dislike of adverbs is definitely coming from the one person here who did not grow up reading Harry Potter. I didn't uh, read is it. Thing, is that thing? Does it have a lot oh, of adverbs? She loves oh, adverbs. They're fuck. all over those books. No, I, nothing. Just I, look. I don't believe in any kind of like firm and hard. Like there's no yeah. tr- there's no rules. But as a rule of thumb, going through and crossing out adverbs makes anything better. Almost almost always. <laughs> Uh Uh-oh, you know what that sound means. It's time for an update on Arizona. (laughs) Last week, an Arizona grand jury indicted a number of Trump allies, including Rudy Giuliani and former White House officials Mark Meadows and Boris Epstein, over their efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Wow, who would have guessed that 9-11 would actually turn out to be the best day of someone's (laughs) life? In addition to Trump's day-to-day cronies, Arizona also indicted every single fake elector who agreed to take part in the former president's scheme, including two state senators, Anthony Kern and Jake Hoffman. I think it's cool that Arizona really took its time with this. No one expects to be indicted four years later. Probably startled Rudy into squirting his ink. Far from distancing themselves from these clowns, the Arizona GOP has elected indicted fake elector Jake Hoffman to serve as national committeeman for the RNC, or as accused co-conspirator Rudy Giuliani keeps calling him by mistake, Jack Hoffman. Wonderful. Jack off, man. Yeah. Jack off, man. Jack off, man. Mm-hmm. In other Arizona news, the state Senate is poised to approve a bill to repeal Arizona's Civil War era near total abortion ban this week. Once that ban is repealed, Arizonans will finally be free to live under a 15 week abortion ban <laughs> that is already in place. So I hope people understand what Republicans jo- just fought tooth and nail to save because they it only got they had to beg to finally get three Republicans to cross party lines on the which, third try on the third try, which alienated them from from their own party, got them stripped of their committees to repeal an abortion law, not to put in place a policy where where people are free to make decisions about their own bodies, but to allow a different abortion ban less draconian than the 1864 ban to go into effect. That's what Republicans were fighting for. They had a choice to fight between a 15 week ban and a near total and per, near total ban on abortion, and that's what they've been fighting for. That is the policy choice that they were trying to make that thankfully Democrats were able to stop. I hope people understand that. They don't have anything except for more control. Like that's the problem is like they don't have anything to offer. So it has to come down to these insane scenarios. Like that's, that's, that's all they can do, they, it, this is it. They got the dog murder stuff, they could lean on that. See, this is more upsetting to me than the dog murder. <laughs> Well, well, yeah, this is people. Yeah, it's about yeah. people. It should be, I think. Yeah. Um, I think I think there's there's different kinds of horror. I no need to compare them, or really, but yes, in the grand scheme of things, one dead dog in the past versus the future suffering of a state <laughs> full of women. Like I that. take that. Well, the nice thing about Republicans in America is you don't have to choose. You get murdered dogs. You get women bleeding out in a Starbucks bathroom. You get to have it all, baby, Ooh. if you're voting for them. USA. 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 And finally, a cat was found alive after sneaking into an Amazon returns box and being shipped from Utah to California (laughs) after enduring dehydration and extreme physical distress. It must have been nice for Amazon employees to see a cat. (laughs) (laughs) And I just want to congratulate Hallie and Laz on finding an alive animal story. Yeah. USA. 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 Um, quick note about the story is that she was shipped in this box that had they were returning five pairs of steel toed boots. And my dad's reaction to the story is I just want to know more about who why were they returning five pairs of steel toed boots? Oh, because they had me as a daughter. Oh no. Uh-oh. And the daughter asked for a pair of Doc Martens for Christmas. Okay. And the father assumed that by Doc Martin, they didn't mean like the Pascal, like nice boots that everyone has. They wanted the steel toed, <laughs> heavy <laughs> as fuck Doc Martens. So they got them for Christmas. Then they bought them. It was the sizing was too big. So mm-hmm. we had to return those. Then they came back and I was like, 
I can't lift my feet and knees. And he was like, you'll break them in. And I was like, I guess it took like six or seven years. I like to think this guy had five daughters yes. and then all of them got boots. And also, I just want to say that the thing I like about it is that the cat's name, the cat's name was Galena. <laughs> I thought that was the cutest name. Of all the things to get stuck in a box being shipped across the country. Oh, I mean, I would assume that the cat would be crushed to death a million sucks. times. Yeah. That's a, that's it would find liquefied that's like a, cat inside. That's a, that's a rock tumbler. <laughs> it's probably the greatest that sucks. Cat. This would just be a dead cat falling out of a box <laughs> in the Amazon warehouse. Yeah, because it's really, it's um Amazon's cat, mm-hmm. you know, like Schrodinger's cat. Is it alive in there or has it been pulverized by 10 <laughs> steel toed boots? Ever tumbling. And the thing is, this story isn't even surprising because I don't know if you've ever returned anything to like an Amazon Fresh store. They truly, like, they don't even look at it. They just scan oh, the sure. thing, they take the box, and they toss it over their shoulder. They don't care. You could return whatever the fuck you wanted. It's probably a great way to strip drugs, frankly. Okay, well, you know, put that in the fucking, put that in the brainstorm, I guess. <laughs> I also like that the cat looks like you just told it about what was about to happen to her. <laughs> like she has like a, a thousand yard stare. <laughs> Why did you buy all those boots? And that's our show. Thanks to Kendra. Thanks to Helen. Thanks to Sarah. Thanks to, to be David clear, on the I love twos. dogs. We know it's you do. Say we know you do. USA. And I think I think I think if you're ever at a point in life where you have to say, "To be clear, I love dogs," you've mm-hmm. done everything right. Yep. Great, Lazarus. <laughs> I love dogs. There we go. Me too. Me too. All right. See you sluts on Saturday.